Well, in this episode, I'm gonna to explain to you how lobster went from cat and prison food to a five-star expensive meal that celebrities crave and how it relates to five psychological human triggers that you can start implementing in your sales process to get your prospects to buy your product, service, or business, no matter how expensive it might be. It's all about the law of perceived value, and that is what we're talking about in today's episode. So stay tuned. Welcome to episode 136. My name is Tanya Eliza and I help entrepreneurs and network marketers create success fast while most importantly, designing a lifestyle that you love. So if you're new here, consider subscribing because I put out a brand new training episode and free resource for you and your business each and every week. Have you ever heard of the law of perceived value? This is something that I have been studying intently because obviously I'm in sales and I wanna have an easier way to sell my products and services, always, right? Now it's a really interesting quote that I came, or came across that explains the law of perceived value and this quote is by Charlie Gilkey and he states that people don't buy products because of the actual value of the products, they buy because the price of the product closely matches their perceived value. Now I'm gonna leave a link in the show notes to an infographic that I discovered on HubSpot. Now if you go through that infographic, it'll give you some really cool psychological ideas on how humans operate and how you can bring those ideas back into your business when you're actually talking to product prospects about your product, service, or business. There's two examples that I wanna share with you in this video and then I'm gonna give you five human psychological triggers that you need to consider when you're doing your presentations with your prospects. So the first example is the evolution of a lobster. Now I took a couple of notes and I want you to, to, to listen how this came about. This was something that I didn't know and I thought this was really cool. So in the 17th century, lobster was actually fed to prisoners and servants. In the 19th century, lobster cost 11 cents per pound versus the 53 cents per pound that baked Boston beans cost. So they were serving lobster, canned lobster to cats and prisoners and definitely wasn't the five star meal that we consider today. Now in the late 19th century, lobster was rebranded as an exotic dish by enterprising railway companies and served in dining cars on trains far from the coast. So you see what a little bit of perceived value and rebranding can do. Now in 2014, the price of lobster went all the way up to $7.95 per pound and was considered a five-star meal. It was rebranded to be this five-star meal that only celebrities and you know well-to-do bougie people ordered when they went out for meals today. So think about this, and then I'm gonna tie this all back into five human psychological triggers on why they were able to do this. Now the other example was all about wine. You guys know I love wine, so I love this example. So there was a group of people, they were given two glasses of wine, and they were told that one glass cost about $5 a bottle retail, and they were told the other glass of wine cost about $45 a bottle. And then they were told to drink the wine, enjoy it, and provide feedback. Guess what people shared? Every single person that tried both glasses of wine said that they thoroughly enjoyed the $45 bottle of wine better. And all these glasses was exactly the same wine that was poured. It was a mid-grade wine that was poured, but it was the law of perceived value that these people associated with that glass of wine. And then they told themselves that that was the better tasting wine. They were both the exact same wine. So how do you get this to relate to you and your business? You're selling products, services, opportunities. How does this relate to you? Well, you have to elevate the perceived value in everything that it is that you're doing. 
So how do you do that? Well, I have an earlier episode on my blog where I talked about creating a value stack. So how can you make joining your business or buying your products or services more valuable in the eye of the beholder, in the eye of your prospect, so that it's an absolute no brainer for them to part with their money and feel amazing doing so and buying your product, service, or joining your business. And what I did was I created a value stack guide for network marketers. So you could actually go on and build your own value stack to help increase the perceived value in everything that it is that you're doing. And you guys know that in every episode of Tanya Eliza TV, I like to equip you with a free resource that you can use in your business. Today, since we're talking about increasing the perceived value of everything that it is that you're doing, and the one of the best and easiest ways to do that is with a value stack ladder in your business, I have put this guide together where I share with you how to build your own value stack and how I specifically have also built my value stack. If you think this guide and resource and worksheet would be valuable for you in your business and you wanna pick it up, it's absolutely free and ready for you over on my blog at tanyaeliza.com forward slash 136. If you're on my YouTube channel watching this video, there's a link in the description box below. If you click it, it'll take you to the blog. On the blog, there'll be this video. Right below the video, there'll be a big yellow button. Click it and you can pick up the freebie that goes with today's episode. You'll absolutely love it. And it'll also make you more confident in everything that it is that you're doing. Because if you're out there showcasing 10 times more value than you're even asking in a monetary exchange with your prospects, it's going to be so much easier to get your prospects to buy your products, services, or join your business. So there's five ways that your prospect is evaluating and analyzing uh, things when they're looking at your product, service, or business, and they're evaluating if it's going to be valuable in their world. And this is how they weight their value in parting with their hard-earned dollars. So there's five things that you have to consider making sure are present when you are doing your presentation as far as your product, service, or business goes. So what are these things that people really put weight on? Number one, people want ease of consumption. So how easy is it for your prospect to buy your product service or join your business. The easier it is, the more valuable that they're going to consider the transaction. Number two is how quickly does your product arrive? So do you have fast shipping? Is it something that they can consume immediately? People weigh that when they're putting their perceived value on a transaction. Number three, and I believe number three is the most heavily weighted one of all. It's is how does your product, service, or business increase the status or prestige of your prospect? Does it make them more valuable? Does it make them look better? Does it make them feel better? Basically, how does the next door neighbor look at them after they're consuming their product? Is it, does it elevate their status? Status is a huge element that gets people to buy products. Just think of Louis Vuitton handbags. Number four is lower cost of ownership. So how can you save your pro prospect time or money. So compared to having your product in their world or not having their product in their world, how can it save them money? So here's an example. So I actually really like uh, these greens. I take this powder every morning, one scoop, and I, I take it. It's got all these greens and uh, you know fruits and vegetables. And basically, I get my full daily serving of organic fruits and vegetables in one scoop. So it's very easy to consume, right? It's quick, but it saves me money compared to going out there and buying the equivalent of all of that organic produce and consuming it every single day. So obviously I'm putting a higher perceived value on that product because it saves me money in the long term and it's quick and easy for me to consume. And number five is friendly customer service. All right, this is a big one, guys. If you have great customer service or support on, on whatever it is that you're selling or, or getting people to join your business, what kind of leadership or support is provided, people will, provide, people will uh, put a high perceived value on that as well. So I want you to start thinking of these five areas and how you can get them to relate to what it is that you're selling, your product, service, or business. And remember, I've got you covered and I'm going to help you with that. I'm basically gonna walk you through an 
activity that will skyrocket your perceived value with your product, service, or business with the freebie that goes with this episode, which is my value stack guide for network marketers. And you can go and pick that up absolutely free over on the blog at tanyaliza.com forward slash 136. Please go through that activity. It will immensely help you to convert your prospects into sales. Question of the week. When you were introduced to your product, your service, or your business, what got you to take action? Was there something that really spiked your interest and you were like, ooh, that's the kicker. That's what got me over the fence. I'd like to know about it in the comment section below. So join the conversation and let me know. All of the resources mentioned in this episode and more are gonna be available over on the blog at tanyaliza.com forward slash 136 in the show notes section for you. I hope you got a ton of value out of today's episode. If you did, make sure to smash the share button, like it, comment, get it out to your team and your people or anybody that you think would find value in this information. Thank you for joining me on this episode and I will see you on the next one here on Tanya Eliza TV.